In this video, we will draw the hybrid orbitals for the different geometries that I would like you to be able to use. So just a reminder, valence bond theory produces a picture that's consistent with the Vesper geometries. So we need to use what we know about Vesper geometry and specifically we'll be using steric number to guide how we put the orbitals together because the steric number was our guide for what the shape was around the central atom when we did the Vesper module, but now we'll be using that for every single atom in the molecule. So just starting at the beginning for steric number equal to two, we need to make bonds that are 180 degrees apart. Right, this is our linear geometry. So the steric number is two. So we are going to take two atomic orbitals and combine them. So we're still working with our beryllium example. So I'm gonna say that those two atomic orbitals, specifically on beryllium, we can't do anything with hydrogen because it only has that one S orbital. So anytime you have hydrogen, it's just gonna be that S orbital that's participating in bonding. And combine. So if we take the S orbital, plus one of the p orbitals, what we make are called sp, no space there, hybrids. So you can draw an energy diagram for this. And what we mean by this is that on beryllium, right, it starts out, it has the 2s, and then it has these three 2p orbitals that are all at the same energy. And if we make hybrids, yeah, let me highlight out of this s orbital and one of these p orbitals, the result is that on beryllium, I have two p orbitals that nothing happened to, right? These are unhybridized. They're still there, which is super important because we're going to need to use them in some of the cases. And then my S and my P that combined, I have two. This is where we get, I have a total of two, two SP hybrid orbitals. So because of this, you will find that we tend to drop that principal quantum number off of the hybrid orbitals um, just because we sometimes really need to specify the number and we're only, we're only slash mostly going to deal with things in the second row. Um, if we happen to deal with things in the third row, a three SP orbital isn't going to look any different for us than a two SP orbital. So you'll, you'll see that principal quantum number drop off. What's more important is the type of orbital. So in this case, SP, which is what's going to guide us to make the shape. So this energy diagram is really useful, but it's not going to help us make pictures of the bonds in our molecule. So for the picture version, there are two ways to add S and P orbitals. And we need, if we are putting two orbitals together, we need to get two results out of it. This is underlying is the conservation of energy. So we have to get out what we put in. So if I have an S orbital and a P orbital, I could add them together such that my P orbital is shaded on the left or 
with my P orbital shaded on the right. And it's these two combinations that will give me my two hybrid orbitals at the end. Now I want to redraw this as more of a composite picture, right? Because both of these orbitals are centered on the nucleus of the atom. So drawn separately, it doesn't quite give us really how we're adding these. So here's my P orbital centered on the nucleus. And then my S orbital centered on the nucleus would be something like this. So if I add these together, the places that I have constructive interference, well, it's going to be here on the right where the phasing is the same. And then on the left where the phase is opposite, I'll have destructive interference. And so the result that I get out of this is I have a little lobe that's shaded dark and a big lobe that's unshaded. So this is a SP hybrid orbital. I can do the same for my opposite shading based on how these are pointing. I probably should have switched my pictures, but that's all right. So my P orbital here is shaded on the right, my S orbital on top of that. Now my constructive is on the left, my destructive is on the right, and what I get has a big lobe on the left, unshaded, and a little lobe on the right. This is my other SP hybrid, and I have these lobes that are pointed opposite each other. They will be 180 degrees apart. And I'm going to show you on beryllium so you can see what these bonds look like. And we're going to draw a couple of pictures. So I'm going to show you separately what this looks like. And we're going to draw it on top of the molecular framework. So anytime you draw these orbitals, you'll have that skeleton picture of the molecule. That's basically your Lewis structure. And then we're going to put these orbitals on top of them. So using, I don't know, we'll call this A and B. Using hybrid A, if I put that on top of beryllium, right, and the lobes kind of get separated because I'm using beryllium, the symbol, as my um, nucleus point. Just, I can't write that tiny, so it looks a little bit weird, kind of separated. So with the way that this is pointed, that big lobe is going to be really great for overlapping with other orbitals. So it would be fantastic for hydrogen 1s to sit here and overlap with that sp orbital. Now I still have my other hydrogen here, and this is what I mean by drawing the molecular framework. I have everything listed. You can, if you like, leave this single bond line in here, especially if it helps you draw those orbitals on the structure. And this is, let me label it because I will be asking you to label these my beryllium sp hydrogen 1s sigma bond. Now, if I put this hybrid B on top of beryllium, right, this one has a big lobe pointing to the left, little lobe to the right. So it is perfectly situated for a hydrogen to overlap here on the left with its 1s orbital. And if I combine these pictures, I think I will have perfectly all of the bonds that I need in my molecule. They'll be 180 degrees apart, which is exactly what I needed. Um, and I think it looks great. So let me label this one as well. This is also a beryllium SP hydrogen 1s sigma bond. So my full picture 
which is going to come with a please don't draw it this way. It's super confusing to put all of this in one picture. So when I ask you for pictures of in valence bond theory, I will ask you for separate pictures of each type of bond. There are some work examples coming up, so you'll see um, that it's not as daunting as it seems, but these multiple pictures are gonna make sure that it's really clear what orbitals you have overlapping and that you can get as much partial credit as possible on your drawings. So the full picture, again, please don't draw it this way. And you'll see why. So beryllium, it has an sp orbital that looks like this. And then immediately you see why this is confusing. And I will use a different color here, um, but still, please don't draw it this way. right? My other sp hybrid points here and has a little lobe here. right? Orbitals are, are weird because they all exist in overlapping physical space, but their probabilities and energies are separate. Um, so these are my sp hybrids on beryllium. And then I've got a hydrogen overlapping on this side and a hydrogen overlapping on this side, which is possible for them to be 180 degrees apart now because I have these hybrid orbitals. When it was just a pure P atomic orbital, it didn't work because that, uh, that lobe on the other side was belonged to an orbital that was already participating in a bond. <sighs> okay, again, don't draw it this way. Yes to the pictures above. Okay, that's steric number two. Steric number three, right, this should be trigonal planar. So we need bonds 120 degrees apart in the same plane. And BH3 is a great molecule for us to use as an example. So the hydrogens are still just going to use their 1s orbitals. On boron, I need to make three bonds. Well, this will happen even when you don't need to make three bonds. But when I draw my Lewis structure, which I guess let's put one on here, the steric number of boron is three, right? So we do have a case where one of those could be a lone pair and we'll see those in our practice. But three things around boron, so I use three orbitals to make my hybrids. So I use an S plus a P plus another P and I'm gonna make SP2 hybrid orbitals. So note that the 2 is a superscript next to the P, telling me how many P orbitals went into my hybrid. And if I take, throw an axis system on here, we're going to make it super easy to draw in this picture right now. So I'm going to take an S orbital plus the PY plus PX. And if I take the three of these and create hybrid orbitals, what I find, and I'm going to draw this on top of this trigonal planar structure. So let me duplicate these. so that we have them all the same. What we end up with is an sp2 hybrid that points in this direction with the little lobe. We have one that points 120 degrees away from that. And we have a third pointing 120 degrees away from that. So all of these do 
exist in the same space. So just like we saw with the SP orbitals, but we're drawing separate pictures to make sure that everything is clear. So if I happened perchance to ask you to draw pictures of the sigma bonds in BH3, specifically using valence bond theory, what you would draw for me, right? Based on my Lewis structure, I'm making a sigma bond between boron and hydrogen on boron in order to have orbitals that point in the right directions. I needed to make sp2 hybrids because the steric number was three. I had combined three orbitals to make those. And what my picture looks like is boron in the middle. And it doesn't matter which one of these we pick. Pick this one. This is one of the sp2 hybrid orbitals that will overlap with a hydrogen to make a sigma bond. And then I'm going to fill in the rest of my Lewis structure here. So my whole molecule is here. I've shown one of the sigma bonding interactions, and I'm going to label this. This is a boron sp2 hydrogen 1s sigma bond. And because the other two bonds would look exactly the same. I'm not going to make you draw all three of these. Now you can, if you want to practice, just to kind of remind yourself that all of these are happening, that they all exist at the same time. We're just not drawing it because it looks confusing. But when it comes to something like a quiz or an exam, I just need you to say plus two more because there are two other bonds that look this way. So the next one is steric number four. And if you couldn't tell by the title of this video, this is the last one that we're gonna do. So the great news here is that we're only gonna worry about steric numbers two, three, and four when it comes to hybrid orbitals, and we're not gonna go beyond that. So steric number four, right, the basic geometry here is gonna be tetrahedral. So we need four bonds at 109.5 degrees. And CH4 is a great example for us to look at for this. So four bonds or four things around it, we have to combine four orbitals to make our hybrids. So we're gonna make S plus P plus P plus P hybrids. And these are going to be sp3 with a superscript hybrids. So if I combine an s orbital plus, I don't even need an axis system here, right? Because I'm going to use all of them. But traditionally, based on how we put our axis system, this is my P py plus px plus pz. What I get out of this, I put in four, so I get out four. I get four sp3 hybrids. So on a tetrahedral structure, what this looks like, I have one that will point up and I still have connected to that center, a bond in the plane, a bond coming out and a bond going back. I have if I put that in as a bond, I have one sp3 that points along that bond in the plane of the board, and I still have a bond coming out and going back. And then this is where it gets really weird to draw. So when we draw these pictures, part of the reason I'm saying that you only need to draw one example of each is because getting these pictures to look like they're coming out of the paper or going behind the paper, it's even more difficult to do the perspective. But I'm going to do my best here, right? The third one, I have these two bonds in the plane of the paper. So I have an orbital. I'm going to kind of shade the outline of that to show that it's coming out. And then 
My fourth one, I'm gonna dash the outline of this, would be going back behind the page. So in something like CH4, what I have are four carbon hydrogen sigma bonds. So those sigma bonds are gonna be between sp3 orbitals and the hydrogen 1s. I only need to draw one example. So what I'm gonna do is put my one orbital picture here in the plane of the paper with the hydrogen 1s overlapping and then I'm gonna fill in the rest of my Lewis structure so you can see it on the full molecular framework. Now, remember, all four are happening at the same time, but we're gonna draw one example so that we can keep our pictures in the plane of the paper whenever possible. And if we need to, we can rotate some of our pictures in space as long as the axis system is indicated. So let's label this. This is my carbon sp3 hydrogen 1s sigma bond and it is one of eight four in total so we're going to say plus three more and this is exactly the form that i would like you to draw your hybrid orbital pictures in you should draw one example you should label it with the atom and the type um, and indicate if there are any additional ones of the same type. Okay, so we've done all of these geometries. Now in steric number two, where we had SPs, and steric number three, where we had SP2s, we didn't use every orbital that was available to us. So I'm gonna give you some hints in this video because it's starting to get a little bit long, but we're gonna use them in the worked example of what about the leftover orbitals? We will use them in some cases and in some cases we won't. And if you remember back to the first video, where I talked about two different types of bonds, and you notice we've only drawn one type of bond, you might start to get an idea about what we're gonna do with these leftover orbitals. Because the leftover orbitals are all Ps. So in sp3, right, we used everything, so there's nothing left. In sp2, there's one P left. And in SP, there are two P's left. So the first question that we need to deal with is which one? So in SP2, I think I did draw an axis system. Yeah, I drew an axis system when we did this. I put my molecule in the plane of the screen. I used a PX and a PY to make my hybrids, which put my hybrids in the XY plane. So let's redraw that really quickly, right? This is my axis system, Z, X, Y. For sp2, with the picture like this, my molecule is in the xy plane. So we must use s plus px plus py to make the hybrids. So PZ is the one that is left. So with the way that my molecule is drawn, I'm actually gonna put this in gray. So this is my molecule. My leftover, do it in orange, my leftover PZ orbital, I have one lobe sticking out and one lobe going back. So it is 
perpendicular to all of those bonds that exist in the plane. Now, a much easier way to see this is if we do a rotation. If I put, um, let's still do this in gray. If I put my molecule like this, and I'm going to call this a rotation of the molecule rather than a reorientation, just to show you what I mean. For this picture of the molecule, my axis system is rotated like this. So the XY plane is coming out and going back, and then that Z axis is pointing up and down. So my P orbital looks like this. Now, when you're drawing these, be very, very careful because all of our hybrid pictures, we've had that one big lobe and the little lobe. When you're drawing pure P orbitals, make sure they look actually like pure P orbitals. Okay, so that's my one P orbital that's left in SP2. In we'll just call it steric number of two, right? When we made SP hybrids, we have two P orbitals left. So again, it depends on how you orient the molecule relative to your axis system. So if I drew my BEH2 like this, right? It's all pointing with the X axis. So my hybrids were S plus PX, in order to make bonds that lie along this axis, which means I have PY and PZ left over. So in terms of how those sit on my molecule, you draw a couple of gray molecular skeletons here, put my pure P orbitals, right? my PY sits like this, and it doesn't matter which side you shade, just like always. And then my PZ sits like this. Okay, so that's what the leftover orbitals look like, but to be honest, this is a little bit boring. So we need to use these to get a better idea of what's going on with the bonding in a molecule. So you'll see that in the work example coming up.